everybody, Zach Kramer here. Uh, in this notebook, we're going to talk a little bit about photogrammetry. Uh, in part one, we're going to use a very simple but a useful tool called uh, Microsoft Image uh, So this is uh, available on the Microsoft download page. Uh, easy to install. Uh, click on the easy install. Uh, we're going to go ahead and document that uh, as, you are, uh, uh, as you are installing it. Um, it does only run on Windows, so that's a bit uh, unfortunate, but uh, we be getting into that. Um, so, uh, once you have it installed, how do you run it? Well, um, I've downloaded, uh, or I've created um, a uh, collection of photographs here, um, <coughs> which are just some photographs that I took uh, sort of outside my uh, back window, uh, just to kind of show you how uh, the, the compositing process works. Um, so many of the, 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 the tools that you might want to use to process images are actually available on your phone. So creating simple things like panoramas uh, are available. But you can actually make point clouds, um, or I'm sorry, you can, you can actually make uh, what looks like orthophotos um, with uh, Microsoft Image Composite Editor. Uh, and uh, it runs quite a bit faster than some of the other sort of high-tech photogrammetric tools. Um, the accuracy isn't quite as good, um, but it's still fairly effective. So. Uh, what we have here are just a number of uh, photos, I think 22 different photos that I, that I grabbed. Um, to run Microsoft uh, ICE, what you do is you'll select all the images that you want, right click on these, and should get a context menu right here uh, once you've installed the program that says Stitch Using Image Composite Editor. So if you go ahead and click on that, <clears throat> it'll start the program. And you'll get all of those, windows, or all of those photographs that you um, highlighted in your window here. Um, you've got a lot of different options here, um, how to create these things. So uh, the camera motion, you're almost certainly going to want to leave it auto-detect, but you can actually um, set these things um, based on uh, if, the, if the motion was very predictable. If you find that auto-detect isn't working very well, then sometimes that's a nice thing to try. Um, you can also create structured panoramas, um, in which case you're very particular about how you've defined uh, these things. Most people aren't going to want to do that, um, so we will... Um, we'll back out of that and just hit simple panorama again. Um, if we move to the next portion here, uh, it's going to go through and try to align all of these images together. Uh, the more images you have, uh, the longer that's going to take. Um, my uh, laptop that I'm recording this on isn't particularly powerful, so for 22 images um, you could expect this process to take just a minute or two. Um, so we'll just wait this out here. It should, it should pop up here in just a second. Um, Okay, so that's done uh, and just took about, um, I would say, two and a half minutes. Um, now, one of the cool things about this is, uh, you can see that the reconstruction has been done. Um, one of the cool things about this is that we have a number of different um, projections. Um, so as geographers, you're actually pretty used to many of these. Um, so we have cylindrical, transverse cylindrical, mercator projections, transverse mercator. Um, lots of things that you can do to sort of manipulate how um, the, these images come together. And some of these are really kind of um, cool ones to do for effect. Um, so go ahead and like click through some of these and just sort of see what you can do. Um, perspective is nice. It kind of lets you move things around. And as you can see, I'm interacting with the photo right here um, as well. Um, so you can reposition and reshape. And you can see that the, the, that the projection part of it is really straightening and bending lines, changing how uh, this, is, um, this is coming together. So very, very powerful toolkit um, that lets you sort of make some interesting um, adjustments here. Uh, now the frame that's around this is just sort of to help you uh, see what's going on. But if you move into the next frame uh, to crop, uh, you can change uh, where this is. So obviously we have seams in the window, places or seams in the, seams in the photograph, places where we didn't get um, uh, we didn't get full covered, and so we can we can adjust that with the bounding box pretty easily, uh, and just sort of change change the shape, like so. Uh, maybe we don't want our garbage cans in there, uh, and we do something like that. Um, now you can always go back, and obviously we could we could fill these photographs in. Uh, this is really just an example, so I'm not going to fret too much about the details. Um, you can also see over here that we have some indications of. Um, uh, the size of the image. So we have an image size width of 9,000 pixels and an image height of 3,000, 3,500 pixels. Um, so that's big. So you can really tell that we're really getting a lot more out of this than um, is, you know, than a single, uh, 
than a single frame, uh, we're getting quite a bit of information out of this. So uh, if we go ahead and hit next, um, we can actually save the product. Um, but uh, another thing that we can do uh, is just, uh, I'm sorry, we can, we can save the, uh, the, the process itself um, up here, uh, which is going to save, uh, save it as a project, maybe something similar like you're used to with ArcGIS. It will, you know, tie into the original data sources and you can sort of start from scratch. But what we might want to do is just export a JPEG of what we see here. Um, so that's pretty easy to do. We would just export uh, and you can see that we've got a, a flag here uh, calling it a stitch. We're exporting the panorama. And then if we go back in here, um, we've got that panorama right here. Um, so just an easy, quick tool to do some stitching, but more than just stitching, it allows us to sort of play around with the, with the projection, with how the alignment is, is happening. Um, so a pretty powerful tool.